Hey guys, welcome back to my studio. If you're here for the first time, I'm Ashley or Lay Spirit Designs. And today, instead of like a time lapse or anything, I'm gonna show you guys how I create acrylic keychains. Now, I want to be clear and let you know that this is a tutorial about how I specifically order my keychains with Vograce. And I do not go through their website to order. I go through my email. I have a direct contact with my rep. And I'm not gonna cover any of that. So it's just how I create the keychain design from start to finish and then set up the file for ordering and sending to the manufacturer. I'm also going to include a section at the end where it shows how I create digital mockups of my keychains. So I hope you enjoy. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and be sure to click the bell so you never miss one of my tutorials or any of my other studio content. So in this video, I'm going to kind of walk you through my process of how I create acrylic keychains from the art all the way to manufacture files and even making mock-ups for posting on social media. Um, Cause this is pretty much all I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> um, so this keychain design is going to be a Monstera Deliciosa leaf because I love them. I have had two of them now in my plant collection um, and this one's going to be double sided on clear acrylic and you'll see momentarily that the back side is going to be a slightly different design than the front so I'll show you how um, front and back artwork is set up but you know I want you to take note that I'm using references because usually I have a lot of trouble drawing these leaves for some reason even though they're like pretty simple um, I wanted something between realistic and kind of stylized, like a lot of my work has been, so um, I went for really simple shading and very slight details. And then on the back side, which I just duplicated the group that I had, um, on the back side I end up doing a variegated version, which I love. And you'll see me click through many times watching it toggle back and forth, and I just, it always, it always gets me to see the front and back stuff. So, and I had a hard time with this textured brush to get the, the variations and the streaking how I wanted it while making it feel natural. So I just kind of gave up on the left side, but um, yeah. So I don't know if you can tell, cause I kind of zoomed in on my screen a little bit, but I do have the front artwork and the back artwork in two separate folders here. Um, that way I can just close them and all that. So when I make artwork for keychains to send to manufacturers, I will save the artwork as its own file. So I have all the layers and everything. And then I will also make a file specifically for the manufacturer, which has everything condensed, all the information on there for them. And I'll show you what that all is. And I think you can kind of see it's very blurry feedback for me on my end, but um, I like to input all of the information for the for that particular order in um, the name. And then here is the folder of my order, and I like to reference that image for my keychain attachments, and that way the manufacturer knows exactly what I'm looking for. So, um, I've slowed down this half of the footage because this is where it gets interesting. So, these folders with the front and back artwork, I will group them, or I'll merge them together so they're just flat and then I'll name them accordingly. And then um, because it's gonna be double-sided and I do what's called double board acrylic, which makes it extra thick, um, I have them add a layer of white in between so that there's no translucency where I don't intend it to be. So it's a nice, solid, crisp design. And then I go in and I select the outline of the entire drawing and on a separate layer, I will go and um, into select and expand so that it expands outwards and then when I'm in the lasso tool if you right click it'll give you the option to use a stroke and that gives you your outline and I had to go in and kind of edit out these little gaps because I don't want it to be there on the actual outline I want it to be completely surrounding so that those gaps are just clear acrylic
And then once that's done, I go in with my circle marquee tool and I create the keychain loop hole in the same method. And then I just add a little hole where the keychain will go. And the manufacturer probably just kind of uses this as a guideline. Um, it's not going to be exactly how I draw it out, so I'm not really going for precision here. Just an idea. So, and then I name that to be the outline. And this is my manufacturer file. And I'll go ahead and name that, make sure it has the size, the specs, the attachment, the quantity, and I'll drop that back into my folder with the rest of my order. But now onto the fun part. Um, I don't plan to do it much anymore, but I used to like to make mock-ups of my keychains so that you can go ahead and start posting about them before you actually have it. So I'm gonna drag this whole design minus the white layer into this little mock-up template that I have. And I'm gonna kind of squish it down and adjust it just so. And I'm gonna keep that other sticker that was there as a placeholder there for now, just because I'm gonna use its um, layer style information. But I'll go in and I'll select the outline, fill it with white, delete the outline layer, duplicate the white layer, and then I'm gonna make that like a grayish, reddish color as a shadow, scooch it out a little bit, and I'm gonna select the white area of the red layer, delete it from the red layer, and that way when I do my opacity, you're not gonna see all that red beneath it. And then you have what appears to be a clear acrylic charm. And I had used attachment number five on that, which is like a really short gold key ring. And I know that I have used that in the past on my pumpkin spice shaker charm. So I'm gonna pull up the file for that where I've already taken that keychain picture and made it into a, an asset. Oh, and here I'm actually um, duplicating all that so I can go and flip the back side. So there you go, you can see both sides. But anyway, so I'll go and I'll grab that keychain asset from an existing file. Um, so that way I have all of the, you know, accurate information right there for potential buyers and fans of my work to see. A lot of my other assets for these key rings were like vector files that I don't even remember where I got, but there's been a couple of them that were not available as vector item, like, or vector assets. So I just went into that document that you see me referencing and took a screenshot and just cleared out the white. And that's what I use. And then, you know, make everything just so. It's already got the shadow on it. And if I wanted to post this to social media or whatever, I would go in and write that this side is the front design and the other side is the back design so they don't think they're two different designs, that it's one keychain. And that's it. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys learned something. And if you have any questions or anything about how I did my process, I feel like there might've been some areas where I skimmed through kind of quickly, go ahead and leave me a comment and I will be sure to answer it as best as I can. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And those keychains are available in my store, my Etsy and my online store. So if you're interested in them, you can go ahead and buy them. They're also a clear sticker. So yeah. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week in a studio vlog. Bye.